So let's talk of darkness. Personally, when I was browsing YouTube and kind of looking around at the various guides and videos that have been made about the world of darkness, one thing that I kept coming back to and started noticing was that a lot of them are very dense. By which I mean that it's really hard to understand the world of darkness if you're a new player. If you're someone who doesn't know anything, or even if you're someone who only knows a little bit about it from the games that have been produced over the years, it's really hard to kind of get a full understanding about what you're supposed to do if you're interested. Because the World of Darkness comprises multiple editions, multiple games, and there are so many terms and things that new players just aren't going to know that it's really, really challenging to get started. And what I noticed was that a lot of the sort of videos that have been made about it don't really cut through a lot of this density. And so what I want to do is sort of lay out what players basically need to know when you start out. Kind of give a guide and kind of give some direction. So if you're someone who has never played the World of Darkness, any of the games, or if you're someone who's curious about, oh, I want to learn more, where should, you know, where should I look? This is going to be for you. The thing that everyone needs to know is that there are two separate Worlds of Darkness. There's the old World of Darkness, which is everything that took place and was published before the Millennium. And then there's the new World of Darkness, which was everything that was published after that. And that's roughly the way you can separate them. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but the new World of Darkness was sort of discontinued, and the old World of Darkness was continued, but ignore that for now. The reason why the old World of Darkness ends at the Millennium is because all of the games for Old World of Darkness were designed to be at the end of the world. All of the games were kind of structured around this idea that we are in the end times, and depending on what game you're playing, whether that's vampire or werewolf or mage, the end times are here or, or just around the corner, and so the games have a definite end point, that being the Millennium. Now, obviously, the Millennium came and went and the world didn't end. So, they kind of took that as an opportunity to relaunch all of the games. And this is kind of where new players first start tripping up. Because, you know, you start getting confused when you start looking up, say, Vampire. And you're like, what's the difference between Vampire the Masquerade and Vampire the Requiem? The way that I usually put it when I talk to new players is the old world of darkness has better lore. New world of darkness has better mechanics. The world of darkness was published pre-open D20. So the entire system in old world of darkness is based around D10s, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it can be a bit challenging at times, especially if you're a gamer who was introduced to tabletop games post Open D20, where everything used the D20 system, basically. The other thing is that a lot of mechanics are streamlined in New World of Darkness, and if you're playing Vampire, that's not really all that important. Uh, if you're playing Mage, it's very important, because Old World Mage while interesting, is clunky from a mechanics standpoint when you start getting into advanced level magics. But don't really worry about that right now. If you're a new player and you don't know what I'm talking about, keep in mind, Old World of Darkness has better lore. New World of Darkness has better mechanics. That's the simple way to kind of divide the two. So now that you can break the Old World of Darkness into two editions. There's the first edition, which is the original run for all the games, and then there's revised edition. 
almost always you're going to want to use the revised edition. And the reason is, is because everything is improved for the most part in revised edition. Beyond that, um, the uncomfortable aspects are removed, I guess you could say. One thing that I don't think a lot of people talk about or mention about the World of Darkness is that it's a very of-its-time game, okay? This is a game that was produced in the early 90s by early 90s edgelords, and everything about it feels grungy. I mean, that's part of why it's so good. It's because it's made by the kind of people who are in that subculture, okay? And so it's very of its time, but because it's of its time, there's all the flaws that come with it being of its time. All of the, like, cultural issues, all of the, you know, various, I guess you want to say, insensitivities that come with early 90s pop culture are all here. And Revised Edition, even though it was produced at the time, removes a lot of these, but not all of them. Whereas... First edition just gives it to you both barrels directly into the face. Like, there are things in first edition that are openly racist, uh, and there's a reason why that they were changed. Now, this isn't a huge deal, but there are some books which, even today, are disavowed by both players and creators for, you know, these reasons. That doesn't it got any better in the New World of Darkness, by the way, because edgelords are going to be edgelords, and there's a reason why the New World of Darkness kind of got their writing privileges revoked by Paradox Interactive. And you can look that up on your own time if you want to see why, but that's not important if you want to know things. The point is, if you're going to play Old World of Darkness, play Revised Edition. It really doesn't matter what game you pick. But play Revised Edition. Speaking of which, what game should you play? You're a new player. What game should you play? How should you approach this? Personally, I break the World of Darkness games into two categories. There are games you can play, and there are games you can read about. What I mean is, some of the games are functional games that you can easily jump into and play. And some of the games are really hard to play, even if you have an advanced group, and are much better as kind of source book reading material, and not so much as games. So, if you're a new player, the games you probably want to look into are Vampire, Werewolf, Mage. Those are the big three. You can also do Hunter if you really want. Hunter has gotten really popular in the last few years. But in general, if you want to like play a traditional World of Darkness experience that's easy to get into, Vampire, Werewolf, Mage. Those three games are the most coherent, and they're the easiest to make characters for and you know play around with. On the flip, you have games like Changeling, Wraith, Mummy. Uh, if you're playing New World of Darkness, you have things like Promethean. Essentially, these are games that are either really esoteric or they're not really complete, is the best way to put it. So, to use an example, Changeling is really esoteric. And when they sat down to write Changeling... What they wanted was Alice in Wonderland style, like, nonsense and fairy magic and, like, altered reality kind of stuff. But what they actually wrote was politics and petty squabbling between different factions of fairy creature. So, their source material inspiration are 
very through the looking glass and then all of the stuff that they wrote for the actual game is talking about the various like political squabbles of individual fairies as they fight over like diminishing resources essentially they wrote fallout fantasy edition and that might be interesting but the problem is, is that when you sit down and actually play the games what it turns into is a whole lot of people sitting around talking about protocols and it doesn't really work unless you have the i guess right game master who can like jettison most of the game in the case of wraith the problem is is that wraith is very specific and while wraiths make interesting npc characters it's really hard to play a campaign with four of them just because of the nature of what a wraith is in the case of things like mummy the problem is is that there's not a whole lot of like actual backstory there's not a whole lot of source books for them and so like because they're so specific to a time and a place there's just not a lot to do with them meanwhile if you're playing vampire or werewolf or mage there is a th of source material that you can draw on uh, th those worlds are very fleshed out those worlds are very vibrant and so you can just jump into those you don't have to do a lot of like esoteric understanding about politics and everything to run a vampire game or a werewolf game now i'm not it's not a good idea to learn about the wider world what i am saying is that you can run character pieces in vampire or mage or werewolf when it's much harder to do that with changeling or mummy or wraith that's all i'm saying Going beyond, one of the major problems that a lot of new players have is that they get really excited and they try to digest all of the lore immediately. And that's a really bad idea. In fact, the first thing that I tell people who are new to the World of Darkness is pick a game and learn about that game first. Okay? So, if you're like, man, I want to learn about vampire read the vampire books first don't try to dabble between books don't start with vampire read one source book of vampire and then go i'm gonna read mage now and the reason you don't want to do this is because the lore of the games changes depending on what game you're playing now that seems a little contradictory and the real reason for this is that the people who made World of Darkness wanted everything in the World of Darkness to be coherent. But the World of Darkness is not coherent. What they wanted, ideally, was werewolf and mage and vampire to all take place in the same universe, and for all of the plot points to fit together nicely. But the problem is, is that they don't. And if you try to kind of force them to, it's just going to confuse you and cause you problems. One of the of the World of Darkness is that player characters do not know what the truth is, which means in game you can be like, oh, well, nobody really knows what the first vampire was. Nobody really knows if Cain was the original vampire. Nobody really knows, you know, what the nature of reality is if you're playing mage. Nobody really knows you know, when the end times are coming if you're playing werewolf, okay? But from an outside-the-game perspective, these are, like, major questions that focus on the underpinnings of the world, and they change from game to game, okay? They are not compatible with each other. To give you an every game eventually had a ending written for it. Okay, where it was essentially an adventure to tell you how the world ends in that particular universe. And they're all different, depending on what game you're running. So there are many different abilities with the vampire's ending, where there can be kind of like a time of thin blood, where all of a sudden vampire's powers don't work anymore, and they absolutely need blood, and the only blood that 
works for them is other vampires. And so all the vampires start cannibalizing each other. And it's like, okay, what do you do at the end of the world? There's another ending written where it's like, all of the antediluvians, all the like ancient vampires return, and they're super pissed, and they want to kill all the younger vampires. What do you do? So, like, that's how Vampire ends. And you're like, oh, wow, that's, like, world-shattering, because, you know, the old vampires are super powerful, and in the case of, like, you know, sudden cultural and, you know, societal upheaval, I guess you could say, between younger vampires and older vampires, you know, everyone's going to know that vampires suddenly exist. One of the main facets of Vampire the Masquerade is nobody's allowed to know that vampires exist. Because it's the end of the world, you know? And so it's like, okay, this has major world-altering, you know, results. And this doesn't gel with things like Mage, because the end of Mage is reality itself ends. King, some kind of, like, crisis on infinite Earths from, you know, DC Comics level reality ends. Okay? We're talking all worlds everywhere end and have to be rebooted or recreated because Mage is a game about cosmic level implications at the end. And you can see how this doesn't really gel with Vampire because Vampire is not about cosmic level threats. It is not about the nature of reality. It's not about the choices that you web of interconnecting thoughts. And again, a in-universe standpoint, players or characters, I should say, not knowing what the truth is, is fine. But from running a game perspective, from learning about the world perspective, it can be very confusing. Because it's really difficult when you try to answer fundamental questions that underpin the universe that you're trying to learn about and understand. So, to give you an example, Cain is the first vampire, Cain being from the Bible. But the problem is, is that Cain is only the first vampire if you're reading Vampire. Cain is a mage if you're reading Mage, and he has completely different lore about his life and everything that happened in it. He's a major figure, okay? To put it another way, if you're reading Mage, one of the major figures of one of the factions is Mithras, the god Mithras, uh, the late pagan god Mithras. But if you're reading Vampire, Mithras is a dude who ruled over England for like a thousand years, and he may or may not be the same dude. But the problem is, is that these two things don't gel together very well, and so it's easier for new players if you just kind of shove the two games apart and focus on only one game. This also makes it easier if you are the game master. If you're trying to run a game, it's much easier for you to be like, okay, we're going to run Vampire, and I don't have to worry about the technocracy learning about all of our player characters. Okay, I don't have to worry about some security camera picking up somebody feeding and then sending battle droids to come murder all of my players. Okay? It's a lot easier when you're like, oh, I can throw in maybe a mage or I can throw in like a werewolf or something like that. But I don't have to like, you know, figure out how much they're impacting each other's worlds. And this is kind of played up in the games themselves where different species of supernatural creature don't know about each other, even when it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they wouldn't. So to give you an example, mages, for some reason, don't know a lot about vampires, despite the fact that there's a new world order in mage that can predict the future and spy on everybody. Somehow they don't know about vampires all that much. Somehow. In the same vein, there's an entire clan of vampires that are, or used to be, mages. And yet somehow, vampires on the whole 
don't know that mages exist, by and large. So it doesn't really work, is what I'm getting at. The best way for you as a player, or you as somebody who's running a game, to manage your early games is to not have these games interact. Okay, treat them as their own universes. There can be some overlap if you absolutely need to, but pick a game you like and stick with it. If you want to play Mage, keep most of your interactions around Mage. If you want to play Werewolf, stick most of your interactions around Werewolf, etc. Now, let's say that you have picked a game. Let's say you've gone, okay, I'm going to play Vampire. You need to choose a faction. Because one thing that the old World of Darkness does really well, and the reason why I tell people that they should start with the old World of Darkness, is that old World of Darkness sets up faction-on-faction warfare very well. New World of Darkness gets away from the whole black-white faction-on-faction warfare, and it can be a little harder to run when you're starting out. Old World of Darkness helpfully sets up an us-versus-them mechanic for basically every game. So if you're Pyre, it's Camarilla versus Sabat. If you're playing Werewolf, it's Werewolves versus the Worm. If you're playing Mage, it's Traditions versus Technocracy. And the next misstep happens for all players and storytellers. Because the way the game sets up these factions is that there's supposed to be one that's, like, rational and correct, or even if they're not really correct, they're the less bad faction. So, for example, in Vampire, there's the Camarilla, which objectively suck. They're terrible people, by and large. But they're less terrible, by and large, than the Sabbat. Okay, the Camarilla are basically old... Vampires rule everything. Elders are constantly throwing their weight around. If you're a new vampire, you basically you're on the shit list for the entirety. The Sabbat, on the, on the other hand, are violent psychopaths who don't care about the masquerade and do everything from make Christmas trees made out of babies' bones to regularly set things on fire because they feel like it. Like, the way in which you can kind of contrast these two factions is the Camarilla are in denial that the end of the world is happening. The Sabat know the end of the world is happening, and they're pumped. And as a new player, you're like, wow, the Sabat sound awesome. You know, it sounds like Mad Max. Why wouldn't you want to do that? And the reason you wouldn't want to do that is because if you're a new player and you don't really understand the world or you don't really understand the mechanics and you don't really understand what you want to do, you suddenly end up in a situation where every person who's in your game is playing a murder hobo and there's not a huge amount stopping your players from solving every problem with a 2 by 4 to the face. Like, you can do that. You can run a game like that. I've been in games like that. I've run games like that. But... If you're a new player, that kind of game is really hard because when your players know that it's not only permissible to engage in violent, psychotic acts, but actively encouraged by the factions that they're in, you lose any ability to kind of control or corral them towards any kind of story. Like, you can still do it if you have a group of people who all kind of understand what they want. But again, if you're new, it's very easy to slip into a place where you're like, well, the most direct approach is always the correct approach. Part of the reason why you kind of want restrictions on players is because it makes them think outside the box, and it makes them do things beyond trying to kill all of their problems. Okay? And there's other reasons too. Okay? If you're playing Mage, for example, the reason why you want to play the Traditions first is because the Traditions both have a lot more freedom in what they can do, which gives the players a lot more to invest in. But it also creates enough restrictions that they can't just break the system. Like, they're trying to avoid 
all of the backlash that comes with being mages in a world ruled by technology. If you make all of your player characters members of the technocracy, it turns into a game where you're just kind of handing them toys. Is like the best way to think about it, where it's like, I'm just going to give all of my players power armor to solve all their problems. And it turns into a game about bureaucracy. And that's not really that fun, because the players don't really feel like they, as players, are accomplishing things. They feel like they're being given things by the storyteller so that they can do what the storyteller wants them to do. That makes sense? Now, the thing I'm going to say, if you're going to play Werewolf, and it's unique to Werewolf, and it's very simple. And that is, if you're going to start a game and you've never played Werewolf before, stick to playing Werewolf. Because Werewolf, as a game, encompasses a lot of other changing breeds, and they get very complicated very fast. And there's always going to be one person who's going to be like, yeah, I want to play the Were Spider. And there's an entire source book on Were Spiders. I don't recommend reading it if you have arachnophobia. Don't recommend doing that. Okay? There's always going to be one person who's like, I want to play the Were Shark. Don't let them do that. Okay? Don't you do that. Okay? Because it's really hard. Okay? Stick with werewolf <laughs> you're gonna you've never played werewolf you've never played a white wolf game stick with the basics get adventurous it'll make your life so much easier so now that i've told you all of this most people i think have a base of knowledge that will allow you to kind of go after a game and say this is what i want to play this is what i want to learn about and you'll be able to do that without getting overwhelmed because there's a lot of information, there's a lot of source books for you to look at, and it's very easy to get confused and overwhelmed because the books, as I said, contradict themselves in universe, and they contradict themselves out of universe. There's a lot of moving parts, and it's very easy to kind of just not be able to grasp what you're supposed to be doing when there's so much information being thrown at you. So I think, so far, I've kind of given most people a step-by-step -step on how to understand where to begin. That makes sense. Pick a game, start with not the bland or boring side, but stick with the side that is the less bad of the two factions. To begin with and stick with things that you're interested in or that you know to start off with and this is where I'm going to diverge a bit from what most people probably say I'm going to explain my reasoning and my own experiences to justify why I believe what I believe most people I think when they introduce people to the world of darkness or they themselves get interested in the world of darkness, immediately seek out the thing that interests them the most. And that makes sense. You know, oh, this thing grabs my attention. This is what I want to play. The problem is, is that this can sometimes be something that is so far outside of your normal knowledge base that it becomes really hard to play. And when you're playing a game like Vampire the Masquerade or Mage the Ascension or Werewolf the Apocalypse, these are things that can very quickly make the game unfun. I will give you... In my first uh, Vampire the Masquerade game, there was a player who rolled up a character that was a gang member. The problem was, is that she had zero knowledge of what gang members did, or how she should act, or what she should do in character. And so what ended up happening is that she never would take actions because she didn't know what her character should be doing. Very simple. In another situation, I've had 
multiple players, both as a storyteller and as a player, roll up characters with histories that are beyond their own personal knowledge. So, like, if you're playing vampire, you can play a character who is thousands of years old, okay? But if you don't know anything about the place or the time period that the character is from, it can be very hard to play them, okay? If you're going to play somebody who is a vampire from, I don't know, Renaissance Italy, and you don't know anything about Renaissance Italy, it's going to be kind of hard to play that character. And that's just, like, surface level, okay? There are some characters who are extremely specific, culturally and otherwise. So, to give a quick example, if you're playing vampire, and you roll up an Asimite, it's are very specifically coded to be descendant of the assassins in the Middle East, Okay, during the Crusades. These are characters who are very specifically Islamic. Their culture and their belief systems are all heavily coded to be Islamic-based. And if you don't know anything about Islam, if you don't know anything about this sort of thing, it can be really hard to play these characters beyond just playing a sheet. Another example, there are a lot of characters in Mage very specific to their magical traditions. So if you're a dream speaker, meaning drawing inspiration from various different tribal religious practices, and you don't know anything about various tribal religious practices, you're going to have a hard time coming up with ways of doing magic. You know, if you run Werewolf, and you're like, okay, I'm running as somebody from Eastern Europe and I don't know anything about Eastern Europe werewolf folklore, you're going to have a hard time. So, in general, what I tell people is, don't necessarily go with the thing that interests you the most. Go with the thing that interests you the most that you know the most about. At least for your f- or first couple games, I would say. Once you have a handle on the lore, or at the very least how to play, and you get more comfortable learning more lore and learning more games, you can branch out. But when you're starting out, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to grab the thing that you already know the most about, that you're most comfortable playing. Games that I keep talking about make this particularly easy. Okay, Vampire, Werewolf, and Mage can all be played as personal stories. Meaning that it's very easy to be like, oh, I was a regular person and now I'm a vampire, okay? Or, I was a regular person and now I'm a werewolf. Or, I was a regular person and now I'm drawn into mage, okay? There are ways you can do that, and that way you're not trying to do too much at once. Because trying to balance understanding all of the lore and balancing trying to understand all the mechanics can be really difficult. And I'm going to answer a question that I probably should have answered like a half hour ago, which is, why are you talking so much about Old World of Darkness and not New World of Darkness? The reason I'm not is because, by and large, I think New World of Darkness isn't as good. I think mechanically it's better, but I think that the way in which the world is set up makes it harder to play. That doesn't mean it's all bad, okay? There are parts of New World of Darkness that I absolutely hate, but I'm not going to go out here and say that every part of New World of Darkness is terrible. It's just that if you're a new player, if you don't know anything about the world and how everything functions, it's much harder, I think, to get into earlier about Old World of Darkness is that the game is set up kind of us versus them to where you can kind of plop down a bunch of characters in a city and say you are a part of this faction and these are your enemies and you can very easily kind of get everybody going towards the same direction even if they're playing 
very different characters. Okay? If you're playing Vampire the Masquerade, and you have a bunch of random vampires from different time periods and religions and ethnicities and whatnot, it's very easy to be like, there's the Sabbat, and they're bad, or the prince says, you all need to do this, and you can kind of get them all to go in the same direction. Because it's structured as us versus them. You don't really have to worry about the wider world, unless you really want to, when you start out. You know, yeah, you could be like, this is how our fight is influencing the global battle between the Sabat and the Camarilla. But you can just as easily be like, we're just fighting over the city. We can fight over a city block if we want to. Like, it can be as big or as small as you want. New World of Darkness is much more pluralistic. It is much more faction-based in the sense that there are more factions, and it's much more... I don't want to say incoherent, but what I mean is that, like, Vampire, for example, is based around individual clans and then individual groups that they belong to, all of whom are against each other, which makes it much harder to kind of get everybody going in the same direction. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means it's more difficult, which is why I don't recommend it for new players. If you're an experienced player, if you've played enough Vampire or been in enough games, or you understand the lore enough, by all means, go after it, but I would not recommend it. The same is true for Mage. Mage the Ascension, for better or for worse, easily sets up an us-versus-them mechanic. Everybody, even if they all believe radically different things, are all beset by the same cultural forces across the world, basically. And that makes it easy to be like, there's your enemy, because they hate all of you, and, you know, birds of a feather, I guess. And you all kind of have to go where you need to go. New World Mage, everybody's kind of competing against each other, and while that kind of inter-party or inter-player competition can be good, it can be much harder if you're a player, or I should say a new player, to kind of compete against other players who know what they're doing, and if you're a new storyteller, it can be much harder to compete, you know, keep your players competing without causing hurt feelings, basically. That's, like, that's the long and short of it. If you read the New World of Darkness books and you think, hey, this is what I want to do, or you have a bunch of players who all want the same thing, go for it. But personally, I've just found it's easier to start off with the, the Old World of Darkness books and the Old World of Darkness setting because it makes it easier for everyone. That's just my experience. So there's one I need to talk about. And that is that the World of Darkness is a world, which means that the setting can be anywhere you want at any time, okay? If you want to set your game in, I don't know, 1960s Berlin, when the Berlin Wall is going up, you can do that. If you want to set your game in, I don't know, 1600s Spain, you can do that. If you want to set, you know, all your characters are vampires during the American Revolution. You can do that. But just because you can do that doesn't mean you necessarily should. You can get easily overwhelmed with too many options and be stuck with an environment or a setting that you don't really know too much about. Uh, when I played Vampire more frequently, what I called this was a stranger in a strange land syndrome. For those who don't really understand, Stranger in a Strange Land is an early 60s sci-fi novel about a human who is raised on Mars and then comes to Earth and tries to understand Earth culture. Okay? And the reason Stranger in a Strange Land Syndrome is because what often ends up happening is all your player characters are in a place that neither the characters nor the players are at all familiar with, and so they don't know any of the cultural things, and it all feels weird and wrong. Okay, example. 
let's say you have a bunch of characters or a bunch of players and you've set your game in, I don't know, 1980s Kyoto. Okay, you're in Japan. None of you have ever been to Japan. None of you know anything about Japanese culture in the 1980s. And so it doesn't feel right. It feels strange. You are a bunch of people who have know nothing about the underlying culture, and so it's all very paper-thin and skin-deep, essentially. This happened a lot more often than you would realize, and with a lot less extreme examples. So, to use an example I've already used, the case I talked about earlier with the player who was trying to play a gang member without knowing anything about what that would actually entail. And it's nothing they do both to the other players, but also to the person playing that character. Um, another example would be, we want to set all of our characters up in Chicago. None of us have ever lived in Chicago. We don't know anything about Chicago's culture. We don't know any of the landmarks or what it's like to live there. So none of us can really play characters here because none of us know what to do or how to make this feel realistic or feel immersive is probably the way to put it. And obviously that goes without saying that there's the danger of being super offensive without meaning it. Generally speaking, I don't think that's something you really need to worry about when you're playing in a small group of friends, because everyone there kind of understands if, you know, nobody knows something. Like, if you're like, oh, we're in Chicago and we're all gangsters, and it's really skin deep, nobody's going to be, you know, super offended, you know, if you get something wrong. But it can be a little more complex than that if you're playing in more of a public setting. You probably don't want to be like, oh, I'm playing the black guy, and I'm a white dude, and I don't know anything about black culture. You probably don't want to do that. You don't want to have the stranger in a strange land syndrome. Again... That's an extreme, probably not going to come up. Most players have a bit more sense. But I bring it up because it is a challenge. If you want to run a game in a place, or if you're trying to make a character from that place, it's usually good to do a bit of research. And again, because so much research you know, can be done for these games, because they take place in sort of a distorted mirror to the real world... You know, you can easily end up in the Wikipedia rabbit hole, and it's really easy to get overwhelmed. That's why I say if you're a new player, if you're a new storyteller, pick stuff you already know about, first and foremost, that interests you that you know about. Okay, don't start with the thing that's like, oh, this is really interesting, but you don't know anything about it. And then you essentially have to do, like, college-level research to, like play your character correctly in your mind i guess and that's a good place to that's a good overview of what you need to know what you need to avoid and how you get started now this is obviously not a huge lore video this is not a video about oh this is how you play these games this is how do you as the player or as a storyteller get started? How do you tackle the huge amount of complexity that the World of Darkness offers you? Because the World of Darkness's best feature is that there's so much of it. But that's also kind of its worst feature. Because, yeah, it gives you a lot of power, but that's overwhelming. And so my kind of goal with this was to answer simple questions of how do I get started what do I start with? Where should I look? And in general, I think the points that I made will probably point you in the right direction and help you avoid the mistakes that even I made when I started out. A lot of these are mistakes that either I made personally or other people that I know made when they were starting out that they wish they wouldn't have. So again, just to kind of rehash what I've said, pick one of the old World of Darkness games that I mentioned. Pick Mage, Vampire, or Werewolf. Any of them is fine. Stick with the quote-unquote less bad side. With Vampire, that's the Camarilla. 
If you're a werewolf, that means you're playing werewolf. If you're playing mage, that's the traditions. Pick something that you know about but are also interested in. Don't pick something that you're interested in and don't know anything about. Avoid stranger in a strange land syndrome, by which I mean avoid either playing in a locale that you know nothing about or playing a character that you only understand on a skin-deep level. That's really what you need to do. And obviously the last thing is focus on one game at a time. Don't try to, like, understand the entirety of the World of Darkness all at once. Do not sit down and, and start reading Vampire and then go, I'm going to learn Wraith because you're going to have a bad time. You're going to start asking esoteric questions that you're not easily going to find the answers to, and you're going to get frustrated. So to avoid that frustration, follow the tips that I've given you. Um, and obviously, if people like this, I can give more specific tips on like how to play the Camarilla, how to play the Sabat, etc. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it for what you should do if you're playing as a new character. Hope this has been uh, informative, and uh, I guess I'll see you all later. Happy gaming.